Thank you, Pastor Peter. We <laughs> laugh now. Good morning, everyone. My name is Casey. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm uh, really excited to get to kick this off and share with you about missions. And uh, before we start, I want to get a whole participation from the whole church because this morning was kind of eh. And uh, so you're wondering missions, missionary, anyone here? Consider themselves a missionary? Yeah. Couple? Sweet. Awesome. I'm here to tell you that actually all of you can be missionaries. And you're probably wondering, oh, okay, he's going to sell me. I'm going to have to like travel halfway across the world and spend thousands of dollars. No. I'm going to ask you a simple question. And if this pertains to you, keep your hands raised up. So let's start. Anybody speak five or more languages? Okay. Four? Couple? Three, keep your hands up please, and two, and if you speak at least one language. <laughs> I don't see all your hands up. There's no more caveman days. All of you can be missionaries. My dad shared with you the passage from Acts chapter one, and I have a verse here, uh, verse eight, and Jesus says, but you, will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now my dad spoke about the first half of the sentence and I'm gonna focus on the second half. See, you currently are in Jerusalem, I know that. Nor are you in Judea or Samaria. But you're technically, geographically, at the end of the earth. Why? Well, if you study the, the Bible back in the time they were in Jerusalem, they thought that Spain was the end of the earth. So technically, if you flip over the globe, we're at the end of the earth. And today we know that British Columbia has a 1% Christian population. That means 99 out of your 100 friends are probably not Christian. And if you're all Christians, well, then that's a different story. But there's a lot that you can do as a missionary. But let me share you with why I have this passion for missions and where it started. I was 14 years old, I was living in Toronto and I was going to this group work camp with youth for a week in Michigan. And at that time we were serving in the community and we were um, helping out with people who were not able to fix up their homes or they needed help inside or outside of their homes, they needed prayer, whatever they needed, we went there and we served. There was about a thousand youth from all over North America. And there I saw this passion for serving, serving on behalf of God and using my hands and my mouth as His vessels. And so it started brewing my heart. I went home in the summer and I was like, man, I really want to be a missionary. I really want to be a full-time missionary. So I thought about it in a business sense and I'm like, okay, well, if you want to go on missions, you want to travel, it's going to cost money. So then I made a goal. I said, at the age of 35, I'm going to be a millionaire and then I'm going to quit, I'm going to retire. And, uh, and then I'm going to do full-time missions. Uh, that's not happened, and I don't think it ever will. Now, I'm 26. Two years ago, God said, Casey, you're going to quit your job, and you're going to do missions. And then that's when I started to realize what missions was really about. I have the passion, that's great. But just recently, I've been doing this reading course on discipleship, and I read this quote by John Piper. And he said, Missions is driven not only by a passion for the supremacy of God in all things, but also by a compassion for perishing people whom we all once were. You didn't come here this morning on your own. I know that for sure. You weren't saved on your own. I know that for sure. And if you came into this church this morning on your own, and you aren't a believer, you certainly won't become a believer on your own. And that's when I started to realize it was about the compassion for the perishing people. When I was in Mexico this recent missions trip, I was praying to God as I was given an opportunity to share to people who were, in a sense, refugees from America. They're Mexicans, but they were kicked out of America. They just dropped on this plot of land. And I was praying to God, 
Fair warning. Don't ever pray to God and ask him for this unless you're not prepared. So I said, God, give me your heart for these people. And boy, did he ever. My heart broke in a second. I felt the pain, the anguish, the hopelessness. Because I was once a perishing person. But saved by the blood of Christ, I felt that. The compassion for these people brewed and brewed and brewed. And I just, I was like, I can't stop. And so now I have this awesome energy and passion and excitement to go and share the truth and share the gospel. But where? So then I turned to the Bible. And I opened up the Bible to one of the famous and most well-scripted commission. In Matthew 28, 19 and 20, Jesus says to his disciples, and he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So then I pray to God, I'm like, okay, God, where to go? I'm, I'm, I'm literally taking this passage, literally, not figuratively, and I'm like, I'm really excited. I want to rip off my shirt, and I really want to know where God wants me to go. And I'm like, God, just tell me. I'm reading this passage, and I'm like, God, tell me where to go. And he says, why don't you just go to Australia? <laughs> and I just, two years ago, I was with YWAM, Youth with Missions, and I was doing my first discipleship training school in Richard or Sunshine Coast. You don't know where that is. It's on the east side of Australia, an hour north of Brisbane. And I just felt the call. I have a huge heart for the South Pacific Asia Islands. And it's close there, and a lot of mission trips will be going to those locations. So I was like, why not get closer? Go to where I feel that the nations, I can be used by God. And so, what does this entail? I have been accepted as a Discipleship Training School staff. I'll be officially leaving in August of this year for about two years. There will be two schools per year that I'll be serving in. And what the school entails is a five-month program for students all over around the world from the ages of about 18 to 25. And for three months, we're going to train the students on site in Australia, talking about different things with hearing God's voice and uh, understanding the Holy Spirit, spiritual warfare and identity in Christ. And then for the three months, I'll be in charge of a, a, a small group of, of males and, and I'll be able to lead them and disciple them and mentor them. And then after that, we'll be going on a two month outreach. The locations are determined by really the Holy Spirit. And we will go to different locations for two months with teams of about eight to 10. And there we will go and we'll present uh, skits, we will evangelize, we'll preach the word, we'll pray for people, we'll help the community. Whatever they ask for, we will serve and we'll be there as the God's hands and feet and mouth. And that would be awesome to see people that need that discipleship. That's what the Greatest Commission told, tells us. I want to do that, and I feel that God has guided me. He's provided the way. The last two years has been studying by the grace of God. Last week, I graduated with my associate's degree in biblical studies, and that's a huge feat because I had to read like 34 books. Crazy. But I loved it. And now I'm trusting wholeheartedly, full faith in God's provision, the strength, the wisdom, the knowledge, the energy to provide for these students. And so today, I would like to ask if you would like to join me in partnership for prayer. To pray that God will continue to give me the strength, to continue to give me this energy and the passion and the fire that I have within my heart for these people all over the world. And also that He would provide financially Youth with a mission and staff are not paid. They don't get any financial paychecks. And this is a great thing because it goes with the right heart. You're not going there for money. 
unfortunate. It does cost money and we do have to trust in God for things like that. So I do ask that you pray that God will provide the finances of $2,000 per month. And if the Holy Spirit guides you or leads you and moves you in any way, and you would like to contribute or help out, I would greatly appreciate it. And finally, I want to share with you this really important verse by the great Apostle Paul. He's my big fan, because he wrote most of the New Testament. Um, and it comes out of Romans, chapter 10, verse 14. You're all wondering, can I be a missionary? Am I a missionary? What do I need to do? Paul gives four rhetorical questions, and he starts with this. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And finally, and how are they to preach unless they are sent? On behalf of the great Apostle Paul, I send you, I charge you with a challenge to be a missionary at home, sharing the gospel, speaking the truth, because you all can be and are missionaries for God. And I thank you so much for all the support you've given me over the last few years and seeing me grow and change. You guys are my family. You've supported me. And I'm praying for you guys as well. Thank you for this opportunity. God bless you.